phenomenal to see nearly 350, 400 of you. It's really uh, exciting to see that. Uh, my name is Francesca Hunt and I'm the managing director of the UK and the Singapore elements of a company called MAST. We have a very strong presence in Africa and uh, later on you will hear from the people who run MAST Africa. Excellent. Uh, also joining the call is uh, Robin Peterson. Hi, Robin. How are you? Hi there. Nice to be with you all. Um, uh, it's great to be here in Joburg um, and to be able to share with the rest of you around the country and around the world. Um, I'm an associate partner of MAST in, in Africa, and we are busy building a great business here um, focused on high areas of business risk and mitigating that. So looking forward to today. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks, Robin. And uh, last but not least, Brian Mitch Mitchell. How's it, Brian? You are on mute. That will be a tequila shot for you, Brian. <clears throat> morning, morning, all. Hi. Uh, yeah, so, so Brian Mitchell, known as Mitch. I co-own Mast with Francesca, and I tend to look after all of the creative production <laughs> side. So um, Francesca's the brains, and I guess I'm the brawn to some extent. I'm out there negotiating with actors and producers and directors and making sure that the the kind of immersive film training that we build has the right effect on the people who watch it and, and that we can change people and lives to the better is, is I guess, our intent. But really pleased to be here with you all this morning and uh, very much looking forward to this presentation. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Mitch. Um, let's, let's kick it off. Let me know when you guys can see the presentation. Fantastic. So as mentioned, we are continuing the theme or, or we were starting the year with the theme of uh, awareness. Um, today, we have the Moss Africa team to help us with this theme. Um, just want to go through a couple of slides as an intro to this. Um, so cyber awareness. So what is it? What exactly is cyber awareness? Uh, what does it mean to be, you know, cybersecurity aware? Um, so, and, and a quick definition for, for, for me would be that you and your clients actually understand what cyber threats are. As the landscape of cyber evolves, um, the, the threat actors get more and more sophisticated. Understanding what those threats are, what they can potentially do to your business is, is quite vital. And that is one element of, of, being, cyber, of being cyber aware. And the other one is to understand what is the impact of those threats the, the, um, to your business and, and to your partners. So again, the, being aware, understanding what they are, understanding the impact that that will have on your business is a critical element in mitigating and minimizing those risks from actually hurting your business. And the third step is to, again, I think I will touch on this, to reduce and prevent um, cyber crime infiltrating your online workspace. So being aware, understanding what the risks are, um, um, being constantly vigilant will give you that, that next step to be able to try and prevent and to, to reduce those risks. So that's exactly what we're talking about for cyber awareness. Now, every year there is a month dedicated exactly to this topic, and that is in October. Started way back in 2004 as the US, um, the US president of the time and the Congress uh, was their initiative to try and say, you know, th there is this risk out there, not as proliferant as it is today, but they wanted to at least create some space where um, businesses can try and do some awareness training and try and, and, and create more awareness around the risks that are being, um, being posed in the online space. The question we have now many years later um, is, is that one month uh, sufficient? Um, and I think the short answer to that is unfortunately a no. We are seeing more and more attacks happening from an insurance perspective. Our notifications have gone up over the last you know, few years, and, and this just shows that the, the risk landscape has evolved and keeps evolving. And, businesses keep falling into those threats. So the reality is that we need to be cyber aware 24 seven, 365, and not just for that one month in the year. Um, I do have a poll that I'd like to run. Um, maybe Cesar, you can help me with that first poll. Last year in, in, um, in October, did, did any of you run any cyber awareness campaigns? Did your business run cyber, cyber awareness campaigns? Please, please do answer on the poll. Um, we'll just give it a few minutes for those on call to answer and then we'll close the poll and move on. I know, I know, I know generally we do every single year, we put up campaigns. We had a few Cyber Thursdays, I Tuesday sessions around uh, awareness, around what um, you know, the dangers are out there. We also did it for our personal lines portfolio. And so this is something that uh, as I too, we are very much um, 
um, uh, active on, and we'd like to continue that through this journey for 2023. Give it one minute and then we'll close the poll. Awesome. Let's I think let's let's close the poll there, Caesar. Thank you. Ah, oh, so look at those results. So 56% of you did have some sort of awareness campaigns uh, in the month of October last year, and uh, whopping 44% did not. I wonder what, what the reason is. Please just maybe pop your reasons in the chat, um, and we can see if there was just, you know, no interest from a business perspective, uh, or, not, or not understanding that it was actually awareness month um, in October. Uh, we, we'd love to know. So, so, so things to note around cyber awareness, you know, we talk, we talk about awareness being a key driving factor, and this is because 90% of cyber breaches are still being caused by human error. We see this time and time again, um, where, you know, you've, you're falling victim to a phishing email, you're falling victim to fraudulent uh, invoices and paying out to the wrong people. And all of this is either because, you know, you were just distracted or you weren't aware, you weren't being vigilant enough in order to vet what's coming into your inbox and what you're clicking on and what you're then sending out from a payment perspective. Uh, this is something that we're seeing a lot in our current world where um, in, uh, one of the tech vectors being business email compromise. You may have heard the recent case around um, ENS and them being um, taken to court around a similar incident uh, where, where this has happened to one of their clients. Um, again, so this is all around, you know, if you are aware, if you are vigilant, you're understanding that you've got to verify banking details coming into your account. You've got to uh, think before you click on links or open attachments from, un from unknown sources. All of these elements are things that you should be, you know, constantly being aware of and, and, and moving into. From a risk, from an underwriting perspective, we are looking at these things. So we do ask questions around: Are you um, um, employing uh, awareness um, training to to staff? How often is that, is that training being done? Does it include any assessments that allow you know those staff to sort of uh, really fully uh, gain knowledge into in, in, into the topics that will be given in the training? And how you know how often is that being done? So we do believe continual assessments are the way to go. And part of being here with Master Day is to give you a new way of doing those, um, those trainings, uh, which we'll touch on in a moment. So I too have partnered with Master Africa, as we have mentioned. Um, they are bringing a unique approach into the training space uh, using, uh, using a video film-based production uh, shot, shot locally with local actors in local places that you will recognize and giving you a, a story-based telling to understand and see, um, you know, and really learn uh, those concepts that, that, that we're trying to push out. Uh, the key here is to be, you know, high, high impact. Um, so you, you're watching a movie in, in essence, right? And when you're watching a movie, you're subconsciously learning around the topics that are being talked about, and it becomes a, a lot more memorable um, after the fact. So these are the things why we are with MAST. Um, and again, who is MAST? They've, they've, They've been dealing with a lot of uh, large companies, of, you know, over the last 50 years, uh, predominantly in the UK, and they have now um, sort of reaching the SA market, and we we are excited to be with them um, and and to go on this journey. And I think I will leave it there and pass on to the MAS team to further introduce themselves, uh, as well as take us through what the MAS uh, video training um, is all about. Great, thank you, Luanda. Well, I mean. Luando has said it, that he said, summed it up brilliantly. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm just going to share my screen so that we can share a couple of the films with you, I hope. Um, and uh, then I will be handing over to uh, Robin, who's going to pick up on the... Um, let me just share this screen. Please, will you let me know when you can see? Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, good. Robin, over to you. Great, thank you. And uh, again, nice to be with all of you. It's really exciting, 458 current attendees and seemingly still growing as we go along. So really great to be speaking to all of you. 
Uh, Luanda in his last slide already spoke a little bit about MAST and, and gave a great graphic on, on who MAST is. But it's a, it's MAST as a company has been around for 50 years in the training space, with driven always by the, the thought and the passion of how can we really use training to change behavior in a positive way. And um, the, the, the various ways in which it has developed that really came to a, a, a completely exponential leap forward when around 10 years ago, um, Mitch and Francesca began to engage with Mars initially coming from a, a filmmaking, theater making background and bringing into the training space um, all of the skills and history and, and knowledge and insights on how do you use film-based training to create a captivating story uh, that will change behaviors in areas of high business risk. And, uh, and, and the beautiful thing about film-based training is that, that it can be distributed in a mass way over a very short space of time and achieve high impact. Now, um, uh, it ended up, and, and Mitch will talk about this, it ended up with, with them actually buying a, a mast and, uh, and, and then reestablishing Mast Africa a few years ago, which is when I got involved with them. And um, we were, as the Mast Africa team, there's a whole lot of different risk uh, um, mitigation uh, uh, movies that have been made by Mast uh, in the UK uh, on a whole range of issues. But we were taken in particular by this, uh, the first one, which we've been developing around the cybersecurity. Because as, as you are aware, even more than we were aware, uh, this is a massive, massive area of business risk. I'm sure if we did another poll, which said to you, um, uh, how many of you, uh, either your wife or your family or your uh, husband or your children have actually had their accounts uh, compromised? Um, you'd probably find a, a poll that would say quite a significant percentage of you, because we all know that risk of clicking on that email that seems so attractive, your account's overdue, you need to update your payment details, whatever it might be, we click, we enter stuff and we compromise. If it's our own computer and our own personal one, yeah, it's, it's terrible, it's not so nice. When it's linked into a business system, the risk goes through the roof. And you know that, that's why we're all here, that's why we, that you have um, cyber, cyber risk uh, insurance that you've been selling. But as Luanda said, 90% of this is driven by human behavior. So if we can change that behavior up front, that is the biggest risk prevention that we have. Um, uh, we sold our first um, uh, a product into the South African market actually to ABSA Bank. Um, and ABSA said, we don't want the UK, we love the story, we love the concept, but we want it done with a South African feel, with South African actors with South African participants. And so we created the story. Um, it was distributed by APSA to 47,000 employees. It was done on a mandatory basis. And the feedback that we've had from them is absolutely phenomenal because they've told us that for the first time ever, when there is a mandatory bit of training that every employee has to go through, there has been no resistance. It's been a positive uptake. There's been positive comments, even to the point of where people have sat down with their families to show them the video and to show them the story. So we're very, very uh, proud of what, what, of, of what you're going to see, um, of what we've done. We're also really uh, excited about the possibility of, of growing this training, not only in cybersecurity, but in other areas of business risk and helping you, helping I2 to really position yourselves as market leaders in this space. So uh, just next slide, if, if, if you can go to that, uh, Francesca. Uh, just in, on January 24th in Business Day, there was a, a, a Brian Pinnock had an article talking about how we are facing an onslaught in 2023 of cyber risk. Um, and he published a little graphic, which I'm battling to read myself. I don't know whether that's just my reception, if we're all battling to see it. But it's a little graphic on how cyber criminals target you, and it takes you through these various steps um, in a chain of a story. And as we read that story that he had uh, posted in January the 24th, 
the most remarkable, uh, uh, we all just said, whoa, he's been watching our movie. Now, I don't think he had, but this script line that he says on how cyber criminals target you is exactly the script line of the movie that we have produced in the UK initially many years, some five years ago, and then recently in South Africa. So it's about how social engineering, how cyber criminals use social engineering to gain access to your confidence and gain access into your credentials. And that then compromises not just you, but the company. So we're really excited that, you know, that, that, that what we've already produced is exactly in the space of where um, the experts in the fields are saying, this is what we are expecting this year in terms of cyber attacks. So I'm not going to say any more. I think I'm going to hand over to Mitch and he can talk a little bit about the broader picture from Mars UK uh, and, and how we move from there. Um, or Francesca, between the two of them, um, uh, I'm going to hand back to you. Thanks, Robin. You, uh, if I if I could just pick up very quickly on a couple of points around story and storytelling. So, um, what what we don't often publicise is the fact that we're we're owned by my big brother, who um, has five Academy Award Oscars to his name, and is the producer of things like Mad Max and Babe and Happy Feet. Um, I became the black sheep of the family because I became an actor, and he's obviously a, a producer money guy, and. Uh, um, so uh, he let me off the leash and I went and had a very good time meeting Francesca and others uh, as an actor. And then, of course, came back to business um, and he supported us uh, in, in building this business. And really where the two Venn diagrams crossed was on 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 working with Mast, who were highly expert at developing learning modules and also understanding how film and story work. And we discovered that if you create a, a storyline that has credible people in it, played by really good actors, speaking realistically, um, and you don't make the learning overt, you can create something which is which is remarkably similar to a high quality movie where you kind of forget yourself as the viewer. Um, and so dis discovering that you could make a viewer just forget themselves for a few moments, identifying those moments in the screenplay and slipping the learning in, people weren't aware that they were learning. So we first trialed this with HSBC who basically bought 300,000 seats. They went global with our first cyber awareness film. And we did that in 12 languages. Lucky to have uh, Doug and Kennedy Miller Mitchell behind us to support with that kind of large scale, that breadth of expansion, because we did expand very, very quickly. But the basic principles, and this is a point I wanted to make before handing to Francesca, the basic principles are the same. And they've been the same since people stood up in darkened caves and entertained tribes with you know, pictures on the walls. If there's a story that engages me because I relate to it in some way, then I'm one then I'm absolutely part of that team and I will take on board what you're saying. And I think what, um, you know, and just to pay uh, um, homage really to I2, it's that it, the fact that they've understood this and taken this on on such a broad scale and hoping that uh, you, you as the broker team will also expand the availability of this learning to your insured, that uh, we really can change the awareness and the alertness of uh, of to, of and to the risk of cyber attacks, you know these guys, the baddies, they just have to get it right once, and we have to get it right every single day. And hopefully, by by generating these stories and and creating them to a really high level, these aren't videos. We don't like calling them videos. They're as far as we're concerned, they're films. They come from the same stable as Mad Max. Completely different budgets, of course. Completely different budgets. Um, but but we we hope that they have the same effect. And the reason for that is the way that we design them at the front end. That's it. So that, I just wanted to have a rant about the importance of story. Francesca, over to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And as Luando said, I mean, it, particularly in the cyber setting, it's crucial to have something which isn't feeling quite um, like compliance training. So often in something like the cyber setting, what we discovered, one of the reasons why we sat on this hard, both in the UK and in Africa, was in order to, uh, it was one of the easiest things to shift the effectiveness of any sort of awareness and training. Compliance is very often delivered in a very poor way. It's given in a way that's incredibly dull and therefore goes in one ear and out the other. It was one of the areas where we started our work in the security sector 
And again, the security sector can deliver training very poorly. <laughs> Um, so suddenly we were able to fill a niche in the market, and that was how we managed to grow our company. But we recognized exactly the same niche in cyber. So cyber has very often been seen as some, cyber security is something to do with the IT team or something to do with people who know how these things work. That is absolutely not true, <laughs> as all the uh, insurance assessors are working out. Cybersecurity factors have always uh, tended to um, center on the technical. So where's the firewall? Where's, where, what is going to stop things technically arriving on your desktop that tempt you? Uh, managed detection and response. What, what's your level of managed detection and response? The existence of your data backups, how robust are they? These were the things that made um, that made people uh, insurable or uh, affected the assessor's idea of whether you were underwritable. However, there is a next... Um, there's actually a new factor which has taken over. And that's not the phone. That's the bloke clicking the phone. So it's the point was that we needed to find an intervention which got in between that email landing and that finger. And that's a very tiny moment of decision-making of behavior change. So you need something which isn't just telling people not to do it because that isn't gonna happen in the instant that you want to click the, the link. You need something which is much more effective. And that was why film and filmed storytelling was particularly good in this setting. So we've, we've basically, the end game, is to increase the amount of uh, insurable uh, organizations. So the more you can reduce their risk, the more underwriters will take on the cybersecurity risks of an organization. At the moment, it's, it's very difficult, as you, know, you all know, to get people through the hoops and to make sure that they are um, compliant. Uh, so that's the end. But right at the moment, what we're doing <laughs> is offering this, I too brilliantly have decided to use this opportunity to offer it to you as their um, key cohort of chosen brokers in order to create a study, really, a trial to see how they, they think they know exactly what's gonna happen because we've had this in various other areas, but to see how that risk reduction affects the underwriter's willingness to insure a company and uh, how to affect the human risk, which as both Robin and Luando said, is an enormous part of cyber risk. So our theory was that the workforce and as Robin alluded, their families. One of the things that ABSA said to us was that not only did people watch these films, it was extraordinary. And I've seen in the chat that people are asking for the data. We absolutely can get access to that data for you. And, and I too have, have access to that data to help you with. Um, not only did they watch the films very quickly and you didn't have to nag them. Compliance training, you usually have to go through uh, a lot of nagging in order to get people to finish a course. They, they discovered an absolutely beautiful graph where they had a long bottom uh, axis, which was how long it usually took people to actually complete the com compliance training, long things, 18 months. In the first four weeks, 80% of all those who were sent the training completed it for ABSA. And of that, 80% of those shared it with their families which was a really important moment because one of the major things about cyber risk is that it does leak, <laughs> that it's not containable by a firewall or by something which is entirely protecting of the organization. Human beings will go home to their families, to their friends, to their connections, to the people that they meet on social media. And that is the porous borderline, which it is really difficult to protect. So Just we decided... Just, just to add to what you're saying, yeah. there, um, let's consider the work from home uh, phenomena as well. Yes. So you're getting training in the office place, you're working from home now, you've got your laptop there, you've got your family, potentially your kids. Them also being aware does 
increase that uh, that that you know that that likelihood or decrease the likelihood of you being falling victim to certain elements. So, do the the, the biggest thing of what the, the guys are going through today is the shareability of this training uh, beyond just the, the workplace. Yeah, you're so right, and there there is. Uh, that that pushback post pandemic of everybody back into the office has mostly been driven by the the organisation's fear of um, the porousness of of everybody working at home and the fact that that is very vulnerable. But people want to work at home. They've learned now that blended workplace and hybrid workplace really works, and productivity shot up and various other benefits are being lost. So you can gain back that back again. Luanda, that's exactly, that's a really excellent addition. Thank you. So the workforce watch the films. The awareness of the impact of their own behaviour is raised because they're watching somebody go through how appalling it feels to be the one that let it in. And not only that, but the awareness of the fact that they've got a role in protecting their organization. As we said earlier on, it's not the IT team. It's not people who know about these things who will protect you. It's you. You're one of the people who can protect your own organization. It's, it's a good way of aligning a full cybersecurity culture, really, through the whole organization so that everybody knows it's part of what they're doing in their role. Those two come together and do create behavior change. You learn from experience and your behavior changes very much more rapidly than learning through having something told you. And behavior change leads to risk reduction. So as we were saying, this is why the films are being offered at this stage. I too are offering you guys the chance, there's a limited number of free seats, which we're offering on a sort of first come first serve basis. And from this trial, I too will be able to gather the data in the same way that ABSA and the other um, elements that we've given it to the other organizations globally, will be able to gather the data on how the, the course plays out both with you guys and also with your clients. The, well, um, Mitch has already alluded to the fact that one of the reasons why we think this will make such an enormous difference is because our methodology is based on the idea of an emotional hook. If you give information on a hook that isn't to do with you've got to go back into your memory and find where you'd stored it, the emotional hook will trigger the memory automatically. And that's a much safer way of dealing with risk. Risk is often, and particularly in the cyber uh, security setting, risk is to do with automatic behaviors. It's to do with behaviors that are very difficult to stop. And clicking on a link is when you're busy, when, you, when it comes from somebody who you think you absolutely need to respond to now, it's really hard to get your uh, inside monitor to go, whoa, whoa, unless you felt the peril. If you felt the danger, if you felt the fact that this really is going to cause a lot of harm and you've understood how bad it feels when you're the one who's caused the harm, then it comes from a very different place and your system which alerts you will alert you much earlier and much quicker. So that is, that's our, it's the equivalent of learning from experience, which we all know is one of the best ways of learning. Um, so what we created was a series, almost like a box set, so we created dramas that they're little cliffhangers on the end of each uh, episode, which is why people finish it quite, quite quickly, because you want to go on to the next episode. It's not a question of, oh, I know I've got three more to do. It's I wonder what she does next. So there is an element of imperative in watching these things. And underneath the drama is the learning. So you're not being spoon fed learning. You're not being patronizedly handed learning. The learning comes out because you're feeling it, because you're experiencing it. And again, in that compliance setting, that was a real revolution because very little of that had been ha had happened before. Um, just quickly to uh, I was going to say to anybody, anybody, please do break in from the panel and as as Luando did and, and back me up on any of these if you've got extra um if you've got extra questions and extra points. But I was just gonna run through how, one of the other things that's nice is it's incredibly easy to log on to this thing. It's a very simple process. It's not complicated uh, IT gobbledygook. It's very, very straightforward. It's a, it's a traffic light system. So I too will send you guys a short explanatory email. 
you will engage with your clients and arrange with Mast Africa to give them access to the films and the, uh, the, an email will go out directly to the people you want to give access to and they just click on a link to sign into their own personal uh, zone to watch the films. There's, there's no contracting. We don't need uh, T's and C's specifically signed. It's a bit like watching a streaming service by clicking on the on the uh, yes, please, I want to watch the films. That's your acceptable use policy is is covered by doing that. So um, the just, just before you move on, there, Francesca, to, to give a bit bit more clarity around um, the the licenses, uh, we do we have bought five hundred licenses um, with Mast. Um, we will be giving those out to uh, your clients um, on a first come first serve basis. The way this will work is. On for any new business that comes in over the next two months um, that is not I2Go um, qualified, we will then allow, we will then give 10 licenses to those clients to gain access into this uh, training um, facility uh, where they can then share with um, any dedicated resources within the, within their businesses. Um, they can watch it in a room and share and share that knowledge together and also share that um, with their families as well. So um, the, the aim is to sort of, you know, drive, drive some new business as well. So if you have clients who are interested and you think you'd benefit from this type of training, um, get in touch with us and to, to sort of look at a policy and then from there we will be rolling out those licenses to those ones that come in over the next two months. I think also just to just to butt in here a little bit I think also it may prove a really beneficial sales aid because the film does two things it raises awareness of the risk which is a good thing and it helps reduce the risk which is a good thing so you you may find that it opens doors and opportunities to sell product as well uh, and i'm not an expert in your field but i know that's worked elsewhere um, and also just to say that it's it's multi-platform formatted so uh, we're keenly aware that south africa managed to get to um 5g quicker than the rest of the world because you guys are so <laughs> clever so but it's obviously um uh, you know it's obviously mobile compliant as well thanks thanks and thanks. Very nice that you should thank you for the link straight through to uh, when when you said when we send out the email, the email will be forwardable to your clients so you don't have to uh, explain what this is and why you're doing it. It'll have all the language you need. You can either cut and paste and put it in yours or you can literally just forward the email and it'll it'll say why it benefits the watcher and how simple accessing the films is. But it will also include a clickable link to a trailer like a film trailer for the films. Um, and Jamie, if you could line that one up, this is the this is the trailer which people will see. And as Mitch says, it's it's actually a very good sales aid. It creates a lot of interest. security stuff. No, 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 no. Sipo? Yeah? I should call the office. You should call the police. But I can't call the office because they're gonna think I'm an idiot. Won't be anyone there anyway. Is that the laptop? Yeah, as, as long as we can get this sorted before the bank finds out. Well, the bank is going to find out. How? Because you're going to tell them. There are many different groups that prosper from hacking. Recent global conflicts have shown us that cyber misinformation has become a central part of every nation's military strategy. But this is part of another group, crime. And they do this on an industrial scale. Which brings us to our final group, insiders. And that's the group of hackers you're a member of. <sighs> I'm not a hacker. No, but you're an insider. That's your value to them. Behind the smoke screen of the ransomware notice, the encryption of the files, they almost certainly left some kind of malware asset. Whose only business is to get beyond your laptop and execute in the bank itself. And that's why I'm no, giving it up to th yes. That means. Yes. It could destroy the bank. Great. Thanks very much, Jamie. Um, just checking that everybody can, can, we're back to the PowerPoint again. Has everybody got vision on it? Thank you. 
So the enrollment is incredibly simple. It's just an email address. You don't even have to give people's names. And just to reassure, it's Poppy Act completely compliant. There is there is no data protection risk with the with gathering people's data that way. It's a phenomenally simple learner journey is the other thing. It's not complicated for people to go through. They just click through the films. And one of the things, as, as we said, that's going to be so important about you guys being part of the trial and the, the limited rollout at this point is that there is really useful reporting sent back to I2. So they will get data analysis from who watched films, how they watched it, what they what they focused on. So it's a real, it's it will, we hope, this is, again, this is down to the end game, which it should increase the amount of green light clients, the amount of people that you can you can uh, ensure. And just, just to say that ja Jamie, who you haven't seen, uh, Jamie heads up the technical side of our uh, learning management system. So he's going to be on hand to help and support and to render out reports if they become a useful tool. Um, so just wanted to wanted you to know that there is technical support behind all this. If, it certainly if you is. May run, if you may run a poll before we continue, Francesca. Uh, yes, of course you can. Absolutely. Can we do the second poll? Uh, let's launch that one. So does this type of uh, you know, video-based or film-based learning interest you? Uh, please uh, do look at the poll and give us your insight there. We'll just give it a minute or so for those that are on the call. Um, as you saw, that trailer to me was absolutely gripping. I was ready to get my popcorn and just uh, <laughs> click play. So um, I, I, we love it as I too, and I think that's why we are here with this on this journey uh, with, with the Marsh team. So Luanda, you're I, so right. It's that idea there. of you, you don't realize you're learning. You yeah. think you're just at the movies. You, it, 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 there is that thing of if you think you're being taught something, you, you, there is a barrier. <laughs> There's a barrier that goes up, whereas if you don't know you're being taught something, you just learn it. <laughs> we'll give it we'll give it a few more seconds i think we've had nearly half the people on the call uh, respond if we can just get a few more a couple of words on on uh, dual coding so one of the things we discovered from ottawa university about six years ago was the idea that if you engage somebody emotionally on a topic um and you put graphics on screen that the brain will absorb that information 16 times more than it would do without the graphics and that it retains the information 14 times longer. So initially we started using this for uh, man guarding security training uh, because it meant that we could deliver information to somebody who's very bored and stands at a shop door. Uh, and, and if there's an incident, that information is accessible to them more quickly. And then now we're using it pretty much in everything. So you'll find that there's a lot of um, on-screen typography and on-screen graphics, and it's not random. It's built into the script. In our script, we have three columns. We have you know, stage instructions, dialogue, and uh, on-screen graphics. Um, and that's proving to be a really effective way of embedding the learning. Thanks, Mitch. That's that's good to know. Um, okay, I think we've had two minutes of the poll. I'm closing the poll now. 344 of you have, uh, for 345 have engaged with us. Thank you very much. Um, and the results are, I think, uh, overwhelming. There's, there's a lot of interest. So um, I'm glad there is. We will definitely be engaging further on this and I hope we can impact you and your clients um, as we go through 2023. Back to you, um, share the results quickly. Brilliant, thank you. Um, just a quick run through to show you how incredibly simple it is when your clients log on, they'll get um, a, this landing page, all they add is their name, a password, and they're already registered. It will go through to, uh, this is an exemplar. This isn't the one that we have created specifically for you, because one of the things we wanted to do in the Q&A after this is work out from you guys, please, how it would be easiest for you to access in terms of, do you want a voucher? Do you want a, a discount code? Do you want, but either way, this, this 300, is, is not gonna be there because I too have, have taken care of, of some of that for you. Um, you go on and literally, as soon as you've uh, entered your details, you get access to the course, you click start and you're, you'll be told what you're theoretically going to learn, but that goes out of your head quite quickly because what happens next is you get a click to click on the films. Um, we were just gonna show you episode one because we thought that might be of interest. 
um, to show you exactly how swift they are. They're not long. Um, Jamie, please, could you play episode one? Just, just over five minutes, so um, sit back. <laughs> Popcorn time, let's go. This is uh, this is the refresher. This isn't the right film. Jamie, I think you've loaded the wrong film. This is the refresher. We should be using episode one of the um, Get out, man. Me Too films. Are you there, Jamie? Yes, I'm there. I'm just uh, loading up the next film. Yeah. My apologies. That's right. So this, is, this is not us trying to show you that we've got an updated version that we could sort of do something with next year at all. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> this was again back to uh, extraordinarily. This was again back to the bank who came straight back to us with uh, pleasure at how well it, it went down and said, please, can you do a second version? which A, updates and, you know, just reminds everybody because, again, there's something about film where if you see it again, it reminds you in a very different way and uh, refreshes all your, your knowledge. But they wanted to um, do a second series, as it were, about the risk from going home, taking everything home to the family. Thanks, Jamie. Hi, I'm Nomalanga. I just came in to say welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Don't thank me too soon. Um, Amanda asked if you could familiarize yourself with these policy documents, corporate structures, you know. Right. <laughs> but we were all wondering, are you up for a bit of an evening? A little get together maybe? But honestly, I have so much to get on top of over this weekend. And me and my partner just moved into a new place, so it's... New job, new apartment, we still have boxes to unpack, which I'm doing tonight. <laughs> sure, no worries. Don't forget your dongle. You won't get online without right. it. And you know, if there's anything, anything I can do to help. You could help me come unpack a few boxes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. <laughs> You're on your own day, girl. See you on Monday. See you. <laughs> Yeah, my first day in grades. Everyone was really nice. Yeah. No, I stopped by and got us some bases. So, I thought we should celebrate. We can have pizza delivered. If I can just get started with this right away and smash it, we might be able to actually have a tiny weekend late on Sunday. Ah, ah. What's the Wi-Fi? Post it on the table, pink one. Ah. But... Let's just take 30 seconds to say hooray to us and wish ourselves luck and love in our new home. That's so you. <laughs> hooray to us. Hooray to us. Oh, I've got an email from Amanda. And I can see I've lost you. She's really nice, not one of those bossy head of departments. Well, you're not the only one who's got important things to do. I mean, look at this mess. I'm going to unpack my VR headset. Uh, uh. <laughs> she says she hopes you're both happy in the new apartment. Well, nothing's gone wrong so far, so that's something. Oh! More security stuff. I thought I'd done all of this. No, 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 no. Sipo? Yeah? Oh, no. I, I should call the office. You should call the police. But I can't call the office because they're going to think I'm an idiot. Won't be anyone there anyway. 
I think I have Amanda's personal number somewhere. I just... And I can't lend you any of the IT guys from Western Water. I mean, we've got our own IT problems at the moment. Except her number is on the laptop. No one's supposed to know about it. You know, IT problems don't do much for a company's reputation. Thank you. That's really helping. Wait a minute. I don't even know what's on the laptop. I mean, personal client information or... Marcel. Or Marcel. Marcel. I think we should call Marcel. Who's Marcel? Marcel, the guy from Varsity I used to game with. Good with computers, could fix anything. <sighs> Listen, man, Sipo here. Tammy had her work laptop hacked, and there's a ransomware demand message. If you can help, please call. Anytime, we'll be awake. Wait, that Marcel? Isn't he, you know, a little weird? Not weird, a bit shy a bit socially awkward but i think he's working in cyber security now shouldn't we get somebody professional somebody who knows what they what they're doing somebody discreet look this is an old number he might not even oh hello marcel hi so amazing for you to get back she's fine listen a bit of a problem And that's your cliffhanger. That's the end of episode one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Luando, I think we were uh, thinking of some Q&A at this point. It would be really good to hear what people want to ask us about it and anything they want to... Um, I, ju I just hope you noticed the um, the dual coding on-screen graphics at the particular moment that she got hit, that she <laughs> the, like, the emotional impact in the character, we reinforced with that dual coding with the on-screen graphics. Really important. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think unfortunately the video was a little bit um, uh, jittery and a bit of lag, but I think the gist of what we were trying to to showcase uh, would have come through. Um, for those that do get to to sign up and get the license, they will get to see the entire um, yeah. film um, four episodes, <laughs> um, and see how how it ends and what other elements are get, are thrown into to the mix. Um, and I think without the really jiggery. Yeah. That was You're really right, good. it was jiggery my end too. <laughs> and also just to give away a little bit of what happened. So, so we build up, the, the, the way that we obfuscate the learning is that we create a little three-way relationship. So it turns out that Marcel really, really was very fond of Tommy. And um, and so you end up with a situation where Sipo is a bit upset that Marcel's providing the answer to Tommy. And that, so it, it, what you end up uh, being absorbed by as the viewer is this relationship between these three people. It's the dynamic between them. But of course, it gives Tommy the opportunity to say, well, hang on, who's doing this to me? Which gives Marcel the opportunity to answer with the various people who might be the attackers. And that's how we deliver the learning as part of a conversation between three people whose energies are connected and who are clearly in a sort of uh, push me, pull me type situation. So I, I, we're really pleased. It works incredibly well. We're really pleased with it. Sorry, thank you. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic stuff, Mitch. Um, there's no questions on the chat from what I can see, but if anyone does have a question, please do pop through. Um, otherwise, this is uh, the end of our session for today. Could, uh, I, uh, could I very quickly just introduce a couple of characters who are very strategic partners to us? So I don't know if Barry is on. Barry Searle, are you in? Because um, uh, Barry works with us as our strategic expert, really. He's he's uh, He's got his... Um, well, I could let him explain himself if you're there. Barry, are you there? Maybe he hasn't made it in. Um, but anyway, just to let you know, really, that, that, that so, you know, our expertise, if you like, is storytelling. But what we do is we partner up with people who are at the, the top of their game in terms of expertise. And Barry was ex-head of cyber for the Royal Air Force um, and has his own practice, consultancy practice now. But it means that, in a sense, we can build up the awareness and... Um, uh, you know, and, and change people's attitude to risk. But there is an opportunity to follow up corporately for, for companies to follow up with some of the work that Barry does. And if, if that becomes a, a necessity, then we can we can connect you to him. We also have Colin, who's part of the Master Africa team. He's a director of the company. Um, and in fact, his background was broken. So I don't know if Colin's there either, but just to let you know that there is somebody on the team who really understands your business incredibly well. He headed up brokerage team. <laughs> London and the UK and in Af and in Africa and South Africa. So Colin is there. So we hopefully we've got 
you know, enough of a kind of knowledge board to help. There, there's Colin uh, to, to help, uh, you know, to, to help deliver this in a really effective way. Our, our objective is to help you guys change the way your clients think about risk. Thank you. And I think exactly uh, these, these films will do exactly that. So I think this is a, a fantastic initiative. We do hope our brokers uh, sort of bite into it. We will share all, all the information post this session. Um, we are starting, so from a two perspective, we are starting a journey on this awareness uh, for the year. We will be running another Sabbath Thursday in two weeks' time, continuing this topic um, with, with, the, with, the, with the security provider to give you a little bit more insight into some of the, the elements behind you know, what you should be looking out for as well. So please uh, stay tuned for those invites. We're also doing product specific training for those that just want pure product on the cyber insurance policy itself. Those will be kicking off next week, Wednesday. The invite is coming out later on today. So if you don't receive the invite, please drop me an email and I will reach out to the team to get you the invite as well. Um, so if there aren't any questions at this time, I think we'll wrap it up and I'll say thank you to you, uh, Mitch, uh, Francesca, Robin, uh, Jamie for running the videos behind the scenes. Colin, thank you for showing us, showing us your pretty face at the end of, this, of, of the <laughs> session. Um, and thank you to all our brokers and um, everyone else who's on the call. We're here to help you. We hope you have a safe uh, journey through the cyber landscape in 2023. And I too will be your partner throughout um, for whatever you need. So please do contact us for any of your queries. Thank you very much. Thanks, and uh, have, a, have a great day further. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. I'll be ending the session now, Francesca. So I think that'll cut us cut us off. So thanks again to you. And thanks, thank you. so much. Thanks really soon. Nice. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.